Hey, how's it going? I wanted to talk to you guys today about um, what's going on with the channel, what's going on with me, what I'm doing. Um, so, I will, <laughs> I just guess, I had a job at Walmart and um, I got terminated from that job and I've been looking for employment. Um, I have a job now, that's not a big deal, but, um, it's hard to do things on YouTube without having money and, like, time. <laughs> um, uh, too much free time, no internet. Um, uh, we moved, uh, from a house, uh, where I was living with, uh, Doc Chalk Kaboom, um, and, uh, we moved into a new house. So, I haven't been on YouTube, uh, because I have been going through the moving process. So, if you have been missing me and my voice, uh, I'm going to be coming back, um, pretty regularly, uh, starting at the beginning of next month. I'm going to be rebranding the YouTube channel, not as my company's YouTube channel, but as my own. And you're going to see a lot more videos with me and my hands, my dirty hands. And my phone. And that little, uh, nib of skin on my ring finger there. Um, I'm gonna go over, uh, with you, um, a project that we've been working on. And the name of that project is called Natural 10. And we do have a website, it's www.nat1010, right? .org, that is nat10.org. And we are developing a card game. And I wanted to explain this to you because we had made a recording of the card game um, sometime in the past and people were wondering what that was about. And so here it is. Um, here's a mock-up of one of the cards and I, I spent a lot of time um, working on this game. So you're going to uh, see a lot of um, me uh, talking about this game. This is a hero card. It is a sorcerer. It functions similarly to a planeswalker in Magic the Gathering. It has an HP score, and when its HP is reduced to zero, it dies. And if you choose this as to be your hero, um, you would lose the game if your hero were to perish. And you see he has attack and defense score, just like any RPG hero. And he has an ability there that uh, costs five action points. Um, that deals fire damage to an, the, oppo uh, the opposing hero or to one of their companions. And, like any good game, I have other cards. This is a companion. It is a Kobold. Kobolds allow you to draw an extra card during your draw phase. So, this game has a draw phase, a battle phase, a main phase, just like any, any collectible trading card game. It's come out recently. We also have action cards. We also have spells. And this is Mage Armor, which is equipped to our sorcerer, giving him an armor bonus to, to defense. I'm recording this very close to the, uh, to the table. That's why everything's so large. I have it propped up on DVDs, so you know how this is being made, and I'm using it as a, a stabilizer so you don't have to see, you know, the camera moving around and, you know, doing handy things, you know. We want stable video, so that's what we're doing. We have skill cards, skills, um, it says concentration, if you look, um, the hero has five available skills. Uh, athletics, concentration, disable device, maneuver, and use magic. And uh, a hero has uh, can only use the five skills or cards from um, the skill type. Here is the the major sky type is skill, and the subtype is concentration. So he has concentration down here. So he can contain con uh, concentration cards in the deck. Um, just like maneuvers. These are on penny sleeves. I'm sorry, it's really reflective. 
Um, he can also use spells. That's what this word caster means. So he can use any kind of spell that's non-divine. Magic Missile. And then um, skills like athletics, which he's, uh, it says down here. Uh, he has the athletics skill. So use those. There's a very loud vehicle outside my house. You have Revoke Permission, which is another skill. Let's use magic. Um, those are non... Uh, the skills um, of their bracket are usually going to be um, uh, within, their, within their theme. So, for example, use magic skills are going to be things that, um, that affect uh, uh, an opponent's... Um, ability to play cards directly. So they all have a theme. Um, we have other companion. I'm just going through the cards in this deck. We have restoration. This is a reflect. Um, basically it uh, functions like a um, uh, I can't remember the name of the card from Yu-Gi-Oh! But it deals the damage back to the opponent. What you would have taken um, we have other athletics cards. Uh, there are costs up here, and I'll get to that in a minute. What well, it says, equip this card uh, at the end of your third turn. Remove it from the game. It's a Swords of Revealing Light, basically. So I'm comparing it to other cards, because I play all those games, and I know what to put in a card game. Because it'll look at, oh no, it's out of focus. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, we have... Uh, equip this card, Swords of Revealing Light. There's a cost up here, it's cost 8 to play. And this costs 3 to play. And... an equipment, you can equip like an actual long sword, costs, you know, 4. You have 8 at the beginning of each turn. Um, once you expend your 8, it's over. Um, just like mana, or... Um, or Essence and Hearthstone. I think it's called Essence. I, I can't quite remember. It's been forever since I played it. But once you expend it, your turn is over. Um, hardcore parkour here would take your entire turn to play. Um, turns in this game are very fast, unlike in MTG where they can take a long time, or in Yu-Gi-Oh where you might have a lot of micros, like there are a lot of points during the turn where an effect can trigger or a trap can trigger. And uh, we wanted to try to avoid that to make it as simple as possible. We also have other companions. We have a whole slew of companions. Um, I think there's 40 of them in the first set. And that is, that's right, you, know, you heard that correctly. First set. The first set contains 300 cards. Um, the second set also contains 300 cards. And it will continue like that until uh, set 15, which we have already <laughs> planned. Uh, they're not... They're not written, the rules aren't done, but... Uh, the This card art, this is not final. Um, I, we don't even have permission to use this card art. This is just like I pulled it off of DeviantArt, um, just as a placeholder. So we, pl we plan on using um, freely available art sources or to pay for the art um, in order to produce this card game. But all, 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 all cards are full art, all of them are. Every single one of them is. So it's really easy to do um, art for these cards because they only have one specific size. Yeah, I went with that image <laughs> for this card. It's great. And we have, uh, you know, it isn't, isn't just, you know, <laughs> I have a lot of cards. Uh, this isn't um, yeah, by any means uh, limited to that. And I also have develop, uh, developers um, set cards used for the actual testing of the game. I've printed literally thousands of them so that we can um, we write the card rules down, play test it um, laboriously until we get things feeling good and ready to play. So uh, how this card game actually, um, how, how it'll how it functions. We're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna um, draw a hand. I'm not playing against anyone. I'm just gonna... Oh, this is what the back of the card is. It's just a placeholder card. So... 
Unfortunately, it's not the last person who messed with this deck. It looks like they kind of rotated all the cards. Let me sort through those real quick. Um, somebody shuffled them together. Okay, it was only a couple that were flipped around. So I have them in penny sleeves, so you can be irritated at the fact that I'm not ripple shuffling them or whatever. But good game, would play again. I'm gonna draw seven cards. That's what you do on a first turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've drawn seven cards. I have three four cost cards, two three cost cards, and two zero cost cards, which just so happen to be both spark. So on the first turn of play, I cannot attack my opponent as my summoning sickness or whatever, but um, it's to prevent uh, uh, TKOs, uh, which we have worked pretty hard to avoid. Um, so we would like to, that to happen. On the first turn, I have eight points, so I will, of course, equip my own, my mage armor, uh, which gives me a plus two defense. And since it's not equipment, it's really difficult to sunder it. You actually need to dispel it. Um, so there are three of them in this deck. Um, you can't have three copies of just any card in your deck. Um, and obviously, you can only have one copy of a sorcerer or your hero. We have um, 25 heroes. Sorcerer is one of the 25 heroes. Um, the equipments are, are sunderable. You can actually destroy them, um, just like any other artifact or something like that. But this card is very difficult to sunder because it's not actually an equipment. It is a spell. So we have, with there being three cards in this deck, they... Um, can all be equipped. You can have three copies of Mage Armor, um, like enchanted to you, which um, increases your defense by six. And makes, uh, because defense works as a damage reduction, you have to you, know, you have to actually um, deal seven attack power damage <laughs> in order to overcome the armor. In order to deal even one one HP to the hero, and we uh, the, the cards all have rarities. They aren't listed here. But we would presume the rarities would be listed in this corner here. Um, that's I think that's what we're going for. Um, but in order to have the uh, the cards not be overpowered, like the eight cost cards, for example, um, we only have one copy, uh, and like rare cards only have one. Co you can only have one copy in the deck. Um, uncommons you only have two copies. Uh, in commons, you can have three copies. So the rarity determines how many copies of a card you can have in the deck, which is nice. Um, we have no intention to ban cards, to have a ban list that's constantly updated that you have to micromanage, um, whereby you may think that we would need a ban list. Um, we just plan to write counters to them. So if somebody finds a, a loophole that allows them to draw out their opponent for some reason, um, then we can uh, we can simply um, let's say there's a card that's milling a deck from top to, top to bottom. We can introduce a card that will when this uh, when this card is moved to the discard pile um, uh, as a result of a mill effect. Then uh, something terrible happens to your opponent or something like that. Your opponent discards their hand, removes the top 30 cards from their deck, and then takes 20 damage. <laughs> right? I mean, it's something, something terrible could happen if you accidentally melt that card. Um, and just make it a free uh, free card that you can only have one of in the deck. So that people can use that to prevent, prevent stuff like that from happening. So, I mean, uh, we can write counters for it. That's our, that's our, our duty. Um, so nobody can have excuses as to uh, what's going on. Um, so I've played Mage Armor, and I have uh, five uh, points remaining, so I'm going to also equip a Longsword. And uh, my turn is over, my opponent will move, and then at the beginning of my next turn, I will draw a card. And I have drawn a Potion of Cure Wounds, but my, po my uh, life can't be any more than 
my HP can't be any more than 18. So I have no reason to play that. But I do have Fireball. I do have Fireball. This is a discarded card from your hand with a cost of four or more. So I will discard Tactical Retreat. And I will play Fireball. Sunder all flammable equipment, deal three damage to all entities. So I deal three damage to myself, my sorcerer, and to the opponent's hero. Uh, entities are anything with HP. Uh, all, all creatures with HP uh, are entities. And so, now that I have done that, um, I'm left with two options. I have four uh, AP left. I can I could deal two more damage with Magic Missile, but I will instead use this Potion of Cure Wounds that I just drew and restore two of my HP back. I am at 17. He goes, I go, it is my turn now. Um, I play an Owl. Owls, um, or uh, companions in general, always cost eight AP. Um, it is a full round, full turn in order to play a companion onto the field. So it better be good. And what does this thing do? Spells played while this card is on the field cost one less. So the opponent goes, does whatever they're doing. He attacks me, I take uh, I take damage. He, he attacks with five, five uh, attack because he's been equipping weapons. Oh boy. Um, but I have, I have um, two plus one defense. One defense plus the two this card gives me. I'm looking good. I only take two damage from that. I am at 15, and it is my turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a card. Oh, and he's 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 in for a ruined day because my spells are cheaper now. So, boom, spell. This only costs this only costs two now. Spell. Deal electric damage to an entity equal to my hero's attack. My hero's attack is actually three because I get a plus two bonus for my long sword, and has a base attack of one. So. I'm just gonna go, bam, bam. I hit him. He takes three damage. Electric energy, uh, energy damage, electric damage. Ignores defense provided by metal armor. So we have that whole thing going on. So it bypasses metal armors because it is electric type damage. So his full plate is useless. Goes right through and hits him, the barbarian for three damage. But I'm not done. I have Magic Missile, which only costs two because I have the Owl here, and deal two damage to him. And it is absolute damage. That means it is unelemental, it is untyped. So he takes two damage. So there, this turn, I've dealt five damage to him already. But let's continue. I have four, four AP left this turn. It takes four AP for my hero to attack, but I have three attack power. So I'm gonna go ahead and attack him. It's more or less a troll because he only has three defense and I have three attack, so it does nothing. But I had nothing else to spend my AP on. He goes, I go, play Potion of Wounds. He goes, I go. I gain Shocking Grasp, dealing more damage. He goes, I go. I restore four of my HP with Tactical Retreat, but I can't attack this turn. He has played a Companion. Oh boy. I will also play a Companion. This is Mule. You can have more than one Companion on the field. And P Mule prevents me from having a hand size limit. I can have as many cards as I want. I draw a card, it is Coffee of Quickening, which I play for full turn. He goes, I go. I draw a hold on tight. And basically it saves my life if, if I have four HP or less, but because I played Coffee of Quickening, I have 12 AP this turn, and I decide to attack up to three times. For coffee of quickening's rules. Should I have had something that would allow me to really exploit the ability to attack three times in a turn? For example, I'm looking I'm looking through the deck now, just for uh 
Yes for cards, that will increase my attack power. I can't equip two long swords, for example, because I can only equip one weapon card and one of each kind of armor. I know that there are, uh, are cards in here that gives attack. It's not really for this kind of deck, but I did want copy of Quick and you print it out for reasons. Here's another companion, Cobalt. Well, that's basically how the game is played. Um, this is only a small example of how many cards are in the set. So, I'm hoping that you like this game, or the way it looks, or um, the style. It's very RPG themed. It's themed like um, pen and paper RPG games like Pathfinder D&D. It's along that lines. It's very nice. So, um, if you want to see more of this game or see what we're doing with it, um, you can of course visit, visit the website at nat10.org. That is Natural 10 is the name of the card game. And it is a, it is a pun on, um, um, you know, a natural one is a failure or a natural 20 is a success in pen and paper games that are you know, that use 20 sided dice. But a natural 10 is like a perfect medium. It is the baseline. The, uh, it's like rolling average and it's the, the most average roll you can make, which is, which is how, what we're going with. Um, <laughs> So well, we have a, a little bit of humor uh, on some of the cards. Some of the cards have flavor text. Uh, so for example, we have a, uh, an ammunition type for rangers called Flare Arrow. And uh, the, the flavor text, oh, it just says Flaro. <laughs> what, which I mean, um, puns, right? Uh, we also have just uh, interesting um, jokes and uh, inside things and um, uh, abuses of prestidigitation, for example. <laughs> um, so, if you are into pen and paper games and you know what what that's all about, and you also like card games, then you'll like Natural Ten. Um, but yeah, keep in touch me with me so I can um, keep in touch with you about this game, and hopefully you'll enjoy any of the news that we have about it. Um, we will eventually do a Kickstarter campaign or something like that, but um, it won't be for a while. Uh, we still have a lot of development to go through. Uh, the actual uh, playtesting, um, printing out the actual cards, because these are these are you know they're printed on this um, this hero card is printed on. It's not copy paper. It's cardstock, but it's really thin cardstock. I don't know if you can see that very well. Whereas what we have, uh, what I have directly underneath it is the actual sorcerer card that we had handwritten. Um, for the Sorcerer deck originally and put this printed copy over. But um, for, for, for this, this I ordered. This is, uh, was ordered from the people who did the card printing, but this is also very thin card stock. Um, the actual printer, um, a publisher that I'm going with, we intend to print on plastic. Um, and what I mean by plastic, I mean like, um, like the way that uh, bicycle um, playing cards are printed on plastic. A nice thick um, machine washable <laughs> um, material. So uh, we hope that we produce a very quality product that will survive for a long period of time at the expense of it, you know, being expensive to produce. Um, but we believe we're not going with a um, we're not going with a booster pack model um, for producing this. We're going with a. Um, kind of like a structure uh, pack um, with uh, 50 unique cards in, in each and um, a total of six of those per set. So that if you wanted to get every uh, one of every card in the set um, or a, a play a play copy of every card in the set, you could do so easily by just buying um, six structure decks um, which uh, or structure packs um, which um, I think the price point we're actually trying to hit is like thirty dollars, um, but that thirty dollars would include um, two decks, um, uh, multiple sideboard cards, um, multiple heroes, multiple uh, tokens and counters, stuff like that. Um, it's actually it's pro it's quite a substantial package. We are, I've already talked to the printer publisher um, about how to uh, produce and pay for this. Um, 
and I have it all situated out. Uh, I could do, um, um, I could do, uh, I could do randomly sorted, uh, sorted, um, foil wrapped booster packs in display boxes. I have that capability with my bubble here, but that's not gonna happen because it's not the model I want. Uh, I want, um, a player to buy a box, have the cards, not have to think about not, uh, getting the cards that they need or having to trade from others. That's, I want, I want them to play the game. <laughs> All right. I want, uh, I want it to be enjoyed. So if you find this interesting, let me know. Um, if you want to hear more about this game, let me know. Uh, I know this is a long video. Uh, I tried to produce it at a high quality for you guys. Um, yeah. Uh, take her easy. Okay. Thanks. Bye.